Our first stop is White House, Tennessee, where an old family recipe certainly spiced up the career life of Doris Sprecher. Doris is the creative mind behind a product called Tennessee Chow Chow. And as Ken Wilshire discovered on a recent visit, she's always looking for new ways to add flavor to the lives of food lovers. To many people, just the thought of cabbage, bell peppers, green tomatoes, and onions would be a recipe for heartburn and indigestion. But to Doris Sprecher, these simple garden ingredients have truly spiced up her life and helped her realize her dreams. We call it chow chow in this part of the country. Some people say it has a French origin. Others say it came from China. No matter what, it's deeply rooted in the South now and Doris has prepared it to perfection. One of the neighbor ladies said, give us some green tomatoes. And my youngest son said, uh, Mom, why don't we take those green tomatoes and try to make that relish like Grandma used to make? So we ground up the cabbage and the tomatoes and the onions and the peppers. I mean, just a little bitty. We thought, well, gee, that's really good. So she named it Tennessee Chow Chow, and the rest is history. It's a family recipe that had its modest beginning as presents to Doris's family and friends for the holidays years ago. And we started out doing it at home. And then in 86, we bought the building and, and uh, started doing it down here. It was just my daughter and I at first. And then my husband finally quit his job and uh, he came and, and helped us. So it was the three of us. And I did all the direct sales and they did all the cooking. And they did all the hard work. So encouraged by her family, Doris brought it into the marketplace in the early 1980s. She went from producing a few dozen jars to a few dozen cases almost overnight, and its popularity continues to grow beyond expectations. We're as far up north as Maryland, Virginia, and some in West Virginia, not much, but a few in West Virginia. It's so the further up north you go, the less they know about chow chow, they think it's dog food. <laughs> there are no secret ingredients in Tennessee chow chow. Everything is right on the label. But what sets this true southern delicacy apart from all the rest is the special way it's prepared. Well, we use fresh ingredients and we try to stay consistent. We don't try to take shortcuts. So I think that's, that's the whole thing. Just a basic recipe. Just knowing how to put it together. So while the market for Tennessee chow chow, mild, hot, and extra hot, was expanding across the United States, Doris added pickle beets, apple butter, and more to her delicious canning repertoire. Still, despite all her success with chow chow, she always dreamed of having her own restaurant. So again, with the blessing of her family, she opened one of the finest southern cooking places one can find. The people here in White House, Tennessee, say that Granny's Place is one of the best kept secrets in town. Well, we just pulled in the light and obviously the secret's out. It was something I always wanted to do and we had people coming by wanting to buy chow chow. And of course you can't sell it on the, on the wholesale side, so we just opened up this one room for uh, a retail shop and then I started having all kinds of gifts and stuff and we opened up that room over there and I just got bored sitting around waiting on somebody to come in so I started cooking and it just went from there we started out with doing meat and three then we eventually went to a small buffet and then we just put it out there until it's all gone it's called granny's place because that's what her grandkids call her and just like going to your own grandmother's to eat, from the moment you open the front door, the aroma of fresh country cooking and baking draws you straight to the buffet table, overflowing with today's fare. I think everybody's favorite is baked chicken casserole. Fried chicken, I guess, would be second. Ribs, just about anything you put out there, pork chops. Anything country. Anything country. But even more than the food, it's Granny's big smile and warm greeting that says, welcome, come on in, and stay a while. 
We have lawyers that comes up from Nashville. We have people that come from Smyrna, come from Franklin, Kentucky, and it amazes me. To me, it's just what we eat every day. I just don't understand why people get so excited about it. Granny's Place is only open two days a week for lunch. Doris says if she opened more than this, it would be too much like work. And just like the chow chow, there are no secret ingredients to her success with Granny's. The recipe is simple. It's customer service 101. She listens to her customers, prepares what they want, and does it better than anyone else. I've asked customers before, you know, I'll say, give me an idea of something to fix. You know, I, don't you get tired of eating the same things all the time? I said, don't you understand, Granny? That's why they come. They know they're going to get something good, so. So I stopped worrying about it. Well, this tiny, cozy, unpretentious place may be hidden away and marked by only a small sign out front, but inside it's huge on satisfying the hungriest of customers and serving it all with the warmest of smiles, just like you could find at your granny's place.